Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 9. Paul Bunyan Logs Off the Dakotas. Part 2. Paul had used the axe handle in the east and continued to supply handles for all of his men except the seven axemen. These great fellows he equipped with enormous double-bitted axe heads tied to long cables instead of being on handles. The method used by the axemen was to stride forward in a line with one another, swinging their axes in great circles as they advanced. At each swing they cut down a section of timber as a scythe cuts down a swath of grain. Since the trees all leaned so that they fell evenly and didn't get tangled together, the gangs that followed the axemen made fast progress in cutting the fallen trunks into the proper lengths for logs and piling them for skidding to the river. Paul occasionally got out his three-mile cross-cut saw, and with the little chore boy holding down the other end, He also felled vast stretches of the leaning pines. He had so many other things to look after, however, that he worked with his saw only part of the time, trusting to the seven axemen to do most of the felling, and well did they live up to his faith in them. It is said that his crews cut over a million feet of logs a day, during that winter in the Dakotas, and most of this work was done by the seven axemen. Each of the axemen had five fleet-footed helpers who did nothing but carry dulled axes back to camp and bring out fresh, keen ones again. The problem of keeping the seven axemen's blades sharp was at first a troublesome one. There were no hills in the Dakotas steep enough for them to sharpen axes as they had done in Maine, so a new way had to be found. Well, said Paul to himself, since we can't use the stones as they roll down hill, why can't we have a big stone that can be turned while it stays in one place? So he smoothed off a great flat piece of rock shaped it perfectly round, and made a square hole for a handle in the center, so that it could be swung up onto a trestle and turned by hand. Thus was the problem solved by Paul's invention of the grindstone, a most valuable invention, as everyone will agree. He had bad luck with the first two grindstones he made, though, The first one he laid aside after shaping the stone as he wanted it, intending to put the handle on it after he finished making a trestle to hold it. While he was working on the trestle, Hard Jaw Murphy, one of his men, came around the corner of the tool house, smacking his lips and picking his teeth with a peavy. That's a mighty good brand of cheese you're getting for this camp now, Mr. Bunyan, he grinned. I just found a whole cheese back yonder a piece and et it all up. Then he winked his eye in high good humor, proud of having gotten ahead of the camp steward, who is very watchful of victuals between meals. Cheese? exclaimed Paul, rather put out. That wasn't cheese, you dunderhead. That was my new grindstone. And as punishment, he set the astounded logger to shaping another stone just like the one he had made away with. 
The second grindstone was soon finished and mounted, and it was a very large affair. It did the work of sharpening tools quickly and well, and was very popular with all in the camp, except the little chore boy, whose task it was to turn it. He finally got so tired of sharpening axes with it that one day he became very angry and threw it out of sight. Paul came along a few minutes later and saw that his new invention was missing. What has happened to the grindstone? he asked in surprise. I got tired of turning the thing, so I threw it away, said the little chore boy sullenly. Indeed, he had flung it so hard and thrown it so far that it had sailed clear across Minnesota and landed in northern Wisconsin, where it sank deep into the earth, digging an enormous hole. The great scar it made when it fell later filled with water and became Grindstone Lake, as anyone can easily see from a map. Oh, well, it doesn't matter very much that it's gone, said Paul, his eyes twinkling. It was getting too small to do the work anyway. So the little chore boy didn't gain anything after all. For the very next day, Paul made a new grindstone that was much bigger and harder to turn than the other one had been. It is said that this new one was so big that every time it turned around three times, it was payday again. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The story time level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.